I recently played a game of Eclipse Second Dawn with my friends, and while I was doing alright at the beginning, I soon found myself losing the game. Was it my inferior tactics? Was it the fact that they ganged up on me? Or could it have been that the spaceship miniatures themselves failed to inspire? I agree with you. It was definitely the miniatures that let me down. So what did I do? I did what any middle-aged man in his 40s would do. I set upon myself to build a new fleet. Friends, welcome to my channel. Here I'll be focusing on spaceships, mechs, and cool sci-fi vehicles. Building them in 3D so we can print, paint, and enjoy. If that sounds right up your alley, then let's get started. Having played the game many times now with my friends, I always wanted to go back and, and build my own custom ships or, or fleet. Something that would be more premium, you know, as, as the game deserves it. It's such a fantastic game. And uh, after discussing it with my friend, he suggested Battlestar Galactica. And I thought, what a fantastic idea. The Viper already made a lot of sense for the Interceptor. So with a quick sort of search online, I had my images and I was ready to go. Let's jump into 3D. So let's drop in our box right away. Just gonna center this just for later on. Obviously we wanna use symmetry when we're building this. Just makes this life a little bit easy for ourselves. Alrighty, so let's switch straight into our edit poly. And um, I've gone ahead and um, I have added a little key to the um, to the images here, just so we can kind of have some transparency, just to make it a little bit easier for ourselves to kind of build. Because we can, well, we can rely on the um, the built-in system. Sometimes it's just helpful to kind of have that at our disposal if we kind of need it. And again, it just makes it very easy to kind of switch on and off. So we'll use that in due time. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and we'll start with the um, the left view. Sorry, the right view. Go off with the basic vertices. It's going to straight out and keep it simple for now. And we'll pull this up here. We'll try and get that cone shape of the nose. What's up? Just square some of these lines for now, just to be a little bit more even and straight, just so we can figure out what's happening a little bit later on. It's nice and easy to work with if things are a bit square to begin with, and then we can kind of deviate away into more of the shape and the design. Alrighty, let's pull this across. This will just be at the top of the canopy, and again, might just keep this nice and square. Here, we'll level these out for ourselves. go to our front view. You can see that we're a little bit out on the uh, side, so this is probably a good time to now switch in and um, draw a line down the middle and we'll, we'll activate our symmetry. Go ahead and we'll pull in our top lines. Actually, we're gonna grab all of them. We're just gonna pull it over to the edge because I can kind of see that we our, our side of the ship here is just this sort of subtle curve there. And then we'll pull in the rest of them. Actually, we're going to run a line right down the middle here just to check it, make sure. And I'm going to square this up, but I'm going to have my constraints locked this time. So I, when I when I bring it down, I don't try and distort the front of it. It just sort of stays where it needs to be and gives me a nice straight line. And we'll just pull this somewhere in the middle here. So now that when we pull in these top lines, I'm not going to affect too much of the overall body shape. It should be kind of square and centered. So we'll pull this in here. And then the bottom of it, I think we'll also kind of adjust a little bit. Don't worry about the nose here. We're going to come back to that in a second. Let's level this out if we can. All right. Back to our top view. Just going to do this for now, just to make it easy for ourselves. And our shape here comes back a little bit it's subtle again we'll just keep it simple for now and in full world that we can update this a little bit later on chance to take our side back ones and pull these in as well 
you can see our canopy should be a little bit more um, pinched at the top here. So I'm just going to grab these top rows and we're going to pull them in. And then this one over here, we're going to pull it out and that kind of captures, gives us the, um, the distinct sort of canopy shape that this has. Alrighty, so that's coming along reasonably well. It's a starting point. I think what I'm going to do is keep one wing over here. So let's go ahead and just convert this to our edit poly here. But I want to kind of keep it in this sort of square flat, you know, face because it's easier to work with, but I want to be, see it positioned on the actual ship. So what we're going to do is just generate an instance. So we're going to duplicate this out. And then we're going to, instead of just going to copy, we're going to make an instance. And then that way we know that once we update the, uh, the version later on, it's nice and square. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that in one second. Let's just sort of loosely roll this into position. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. I just turn up my degree here, get a little bit closer. Alrighty. Let's just check out top views. All right, let's just go ahead and pull this out here. We're obviously going to refine the shape a little bit later on, but for now, this is this will do just fine. Okay, so what I was referring to earlier on. So I can kind of make my, my updates and modifies, you know, design tweaks here. So again, throw an edit poly on top and we can just connect this and then whatever we do, it's just going to update on the site here. Obviously there are constraints. There's another way to obviously solve this issue, but it's sometimes it's, it can be a little bit frustrating by working in this axis. So I find that if you just keep an, an instance of the object on the side, so if you need to work in those sort of nine degree snap angles, it just makes life a little bit easier to kind of, you know, get around. And again, there's nothing stopping me from working the top view and pulling this pink one back over here until it kind of hits the desired shape that I'm after. So let's just pull this over here. There we go. And um, from here, once we kind of have our rough shape, then we're going to go back and sort of finesse the details. But really, it's just, you know, roughing out the shape as best we can. So we kind of, you know, have our good proportions right away. Um, you know, just a reminder that this is intended to be for a miniature, so we're not going to go too detailed, but we are going to basically, um, you know, we want to we want to have enough detail for it to read as a miniature, but we don't want to bog ourselves down in detail. It's it's just going to be unnecessary. Just a reminder, guys, I I do intend on releasing the full footage unedited, um, that'll be coming sometime in the near future. So just stay tuned for that and. Um, for those who are interested, I hope you guys will follow along.
now it's uh, time to start making plans and to bring it into our, our slicing program. So um, before we kind of do that, I, I didn't really build out the uh, original model in a relevant scale. I just built it to something that was just simple at the time. But I do have an object in there that I've previously printed before, and it's roughly the size of a, of a 50 cent coin. It's about 30, 30, 30 mils uh, across. So that should be pretty useful sort of starting point. And, um, you know, it should just sort of help inform like how big, how big the scale should be, because even within Eclipse, you know, under the interceptors amongst the different factions, there's a variety of different sizes and scales. So I don't think we need to be too precise with this, but this is just a good opportunity to now that we've done the detail, how well is the detail going to hold up at that scale? So already looking at this, I feel like I'm going to have some issues with the guns. But um, look, it's a worthwhile exercise and, you know, it's a great way to kind of, you know, dial in the settings. Okay, now that we're in our slicing program tutor box, um, I'm just going to keep this very simple. I'm not going to dive into too much detail about the initial setup that I use. It's it's very basic. And, and honestly, there is a lot of information out there that exists already online to, um, you know, to dial into the uh, details of, of, your, of your kind of setup that you want to use for your resin printer. I'm using the um, Saturn II um, AK uh, printer, and um, I've had pretty reasonable success with this. Now that I've got my my ships all lined up, we basically just need to go ahead and um, do the final slice, save it, and we'll just check if there's any quick errors. But honestly, I, I really didn't spend much time in this, so let's just go ahead. <laughs> Guard, begin the unnecessarily slow moving dipping mechanism. I was rather surprised nothing broke, even when I was removing it off the plate. But, um, spoiler alert, I do end up breaking some of the guns and the wings off, which I kind of thought might happen. They were just a bit too thin for my liking, so at this point I, I ended up going back and um, repeating the same sort of steps with the guns and, and the wings to kind of increase their thickness and just make sure they read a little bit better. Just carefully remove the uh, previous piece. Oh, look at that. I'm already feeling more inspired. Now with the interceptor complete, it's time to move on to the cruiser. Continuing with the theme of Battlestar Galactica, let me know in the comments what you think makes a good cruiser equivalent. If you would like to download these files and print them yourselves, check out my Patreon where anything I create on this channel I'll make available to you along with the full video of me creating the ship in 3D. Until then, I'll see you next time.